He's always just been the same dude, um, just really nice, like always looking to, to help people out. And um, yeah, like I, I found out about uh, most of his past um, a lot later on in our friendship. We load up in helos and we infilled um, first thing in the morning. Um, there was about 100 commandos and two ODAs that were um, kind of involved in the initial target and there was another target that was about a KOA that was targeted by another ODA uh, simultaneously. My interpreter was shot in the face and killed um, immediately and then we took two other critically wounded guys um, at at the same time. Um, what kind of transpired after that, um, the medic was able to get to our position. I went to work calling in airstrikes. Um, and uh, it seemed like every every bomb that was dropped, there was maybe a lull in the firefight enough to where that guys could move to, uh, to get to our position. So the medic was eventually able to get his way up there and start treating the patients. And um, as, you know, time went on, kept dropping more bombs, kept, uh, kept marking targets, and coordinating all that. And um, the volume of fire kind of led up enough to where we were able to get guys off the backside of the cliff. So using some nylon webbing and doing some uh, cliffhanger stuff, we were able to, to get down the backside of the mountain. And then uh, basically once we got the wounded guys off, then the healthy guys could get down and um, kind of regrouped in the valley um, decided it wasn't worth it at that point because of the amount of wounded that we had taken trying to get up there um, on the assault and the position that we were in. Um, we weren't really an effective fighting force at that time and so we um, decided to destroy several of their strongholds that we had um, you know, been still receiving fire from since we evacuated into the valley. So I um, coordinated a bunch of airstrikes and, and uh, destroyed those buildings and um, and we evacuated then at the, at the end of the day as, as weather started rolling in and reinforcements were mounting. Um, there really wasn't you know, a good option to stay out there. So I was awarded uh, the Air Force Cross uh, for my actions, um, which from the citation, it was something like 50 attack runs. Um, and probably half of those were within danger close. Um, to where you know the risk of fratricide was significant for friendly troops um, just because of the proximity of where the, the bombs were dropped. Um, so I think there's you know at the time there was like 192 Air Force crosses so it's you know not not very many and it uh, ranks one below the, the Medal of Honor for prestige. And so within the operations in Afghanistan, Iraq at the time, um, I believe that three had been awarded is that right? Yep, yep. So Chapman and uh, Cunningham had both been awarded the Air Force Cross. So, so you were the, um, fortunately, the, the only one of those three that uh, was awarded posthumously. Yep, yep. So, yeah, I uh, came out of it pretty pretty fortunate. So I, I, I got hit in the left leg during the initial kind of volley uh, exchange of fire um, right around when the, the turp was shot in the head. You know, initially I was trying to stay in the military and so um, I tried to get back on a full operational status and the leg just wasn't cooperating with me um, with healing times and then um, the limitations that I had um, with the with the device that I have to use to walk just uh, would have made me more of a detriment to the team than anything else so um, Air Force said you're no longer fit for service and I left service. As I look forward, you know, the only thing I ever wanted to be from when I was a little kid on was to be in the military. So that was kind of just stripped for me, you know, and like in, in one instant, it's just kind of taken away. And so like leaning forward, it's like, well, what am I gonna do now? You know, I have to do something. Um, and so like the only thing that kind of sparked an interest were um, spending two years on a physical therapy table. It was, you know, like it was interesting. It was like, hey, you know, like, the stuff they're doing is making me better, you know, maybe I could do something like that to help out other people in a similar circumstance, um, especially because of, you know, the experience that I had, you know, it's not just the physical aspect of things, it's also like the mental, emotional stuff that you just had, had been through. You know, if I'm able to relate that with patients, like I, I think it would make me an awesome, um, an awesome therapist for them. And so um, I started taking classes. I didn't know exactly what I was gonna do. I kind of was leaning towards physical therapy, but I wasn't sure. And so I started taking classes at the community college, decided I liked it, um, ended up finishing my associate's degree at community college, and then I transferred to Carolina because of the prestige that the university has. He was really the first person um, that I met and actually made a friendship with that, um, that I didn't know at uh, UNC. Um, 
having him in one of the toughest classes at UNC was was great. We we studied together, um, and uh, he he's just been nothing but helpful and a, a great guy. Um, we uh, like he's he's given me a lot of tools. Like he he studies differently than I do, and so we kind of um, have a good relationship with studying where. I'll see things differently and help him. He'll see things differently and, and he'll help me. I think one of the big driving factors was just taking that first class, you know? Like, I wanted to drag my feet when I got out of the military. It was like, you know, I just completed like this giant, giant thing and it was like, you know, I was kind of hesitant to start something else that was also giant, you know? School's a big commitment, it's four years. And so um, I was pretty hesitant. And, you know, once you take that first step, um, you know, the end game just becomes a little bit, a little bit closer with each one. So, you know, it's, the problem is just committing yourself to take the initial one. Um, and so I would, I would challenge or I would, you know, extend anyone like in that circumstances, just do it, you know, don't be afraid of, of what might happen. Um, and that was difficult for me because I came from a, you know, a career where, you know, I was at literally at the, the highest point within special operations that you can go as far as like being in an elite unit. Um, and, uh, you know, to start off as a college freshman was not exactly something that, you know, I really wanted to do. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, I think it's going to be worth it.